Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how to do a, a drop-in unit for a side chair, drop-in slip seat actually. It's a little bit bigger than an average uh, slip seat, but the twist with this one is a couple of things. We're going to do leather. Don't always get to do leather because it's so expensive and prohibitive. But we're, what we're going to do is, uh, the other difference with this is I'm going to show you uh, how to do a polyurethane and cotton. Um, usually what I like to do is use horse hair on something like this, you know, and I do have the capability here of skill and, and materials to use horse hair and webbing and burlap and the old traditional ways, which is what I would have liked to have done on this piece. However, you know, people today, their budgets sometimes don't always uh, cover something like that. So today I'm going to show you uh, uh, a less expensive way of doing it and hopefully have it come out the same or close to the same as, as if it were horse hair. So let's get going. Okay, the first thing you really want to make sure that you do is mark the front. I just stripped this old leather off. It actually had three layers of leather. And, um, but it, it's very subtle what the front is, so it's always a good idea to mark it. In this case, uh, the front is wider than the back. So um, it's very important to know the front and the back and the size of the piece. Um, you'll see why as you stretch the leather. So, uh, the very first thing, now, now my, my client didn't want to pay me to web, I normally would take this board off that was on here and replace it with webbing and burlap, uh, but you know, that was an expense that my client didn't want to pay, so that's okay. So we're going to try to, like I said in the introduction, try to, try to get this to uh, looking as good as if we did the, the webbing, the burlap, the horse hair, the cotton, the muslin, and then the leather. Uh, we're going to be doing a post-World War II treatment which is poly, mainly polyurethane. So let's put this down. Very first thing we're gonna do is, um, before we put our foam on, is to give the, a little bit of this hollow point, uh, which would be created if we just put the foam in, would, would be like uh, uh, an air pocket, and we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little cotton, AAA cotton, a full layer of AAA cotton, right like that, and around or oval. Four staples, we'll do it. We'll stay like that for 100 years. So put the cotton over here, and then I'm going to get my foam polyurethane, one inch polyurethane foam. I'm going to start in the front, because I always know, always you need to know where you are on the piece of furniture, it's really important. Um, I'm in the front now. So this is a drop-in unit too, so we don't want to take our foam over the edge. This is very important. If you take your foam over the edge, then take your leather over the edge, your cotton, you're not going to be able to get this to fit into the frame. So you need to know. Uh, what's what's happening if your client just brings it in like this client just brought this in no no corner chair I ha I know that this is a drop-in unit from the way it was upholstered But if you don't you need to and if you don't have the piece you need to find out Because uh, all of the padding on this piece has to be on the top has to be on the top So um, I'm going to start in the front. I'm going to stand along this line. I got a nice straight edge with the foam So that's why I want to stop there Of course we run out of staples right at that time I always run out of staples at the worst time. And there we go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this over upside down. And I'm going to trim the back. Like I said it's even with the top. If it didn't drop into the unit, you may be taking the foam over, over to the edge a little bit. I'm going to trim the whole thing. Give it a little stretch and stick. Okay. I'm gonna tuck it like the bottom side, just under a little bit. Having a little equipment. Difficulties. Sometimes the gun jams with a little piece of a staple. So I'm just trying to clean it out a little bit by working away from your face and away from your your cameraman. 
like that. So we get that all secured. There's my front, X marks the front. Okay, that feels good. So I'm going to take a full layer of cotton. Okay, and cotton is very important where you trim cotton. Okay, you never want to use, as you've seen in videos before, a, a, an edge like that on your cotton. You always want to trim your cotton. Okay, so that means holding your hand down. I take my favorite hand and pat it down, and then my left hand in my case, I just trim the top of it, right even with the top, this way. feathered right to where the foam is. Believe it or not, we're ready for our leather, and, and <laughs> I'm always amazed at how quick foam it is put together, because to do it the other way, with the horse hair, the webbing, the burlap, and the muslin, uh, to get it to this point, uh, you're looking at an hour, an hour and a half the other way, and we did this very quickly. And that's, that's the temptation today by a lot of upholsters. They want to just do everything with polyurethane. I tend to be more of a traditionalist, so if I see an older furniture, I want to restore it to its original meaning using horsehair. But like I said before, sometimes that doesn't always match you know, the pocketbooks out there. So it's good to, have a, a, to offer a client a couple of options um, in pricing and quality. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, you would be hard pressed to tell the difference after it's done. Okay, so we're ready for our leather. I have it all cut out here. I cut it, you know, we usually cut our leather three or four inches bigger than what we need. So I already, I had that pre-cut. So what I'm going to do is now I, I'm back to the front of the, uh, the slip seat here. So cover this like this. And we're going to pin, now if you have tacks, you, could, you can pin tack. But I'm going to do what I call a pin staple, which I'm going to turn the staple sideways. Um, and just, just to hold it. And then I'm going to come to the back and I'm going to stretch it to the back. Now I happen to know that um, with the amount of padding that I have as a professional upholsterer, I know that I can pull the back and staple it all the way and have it where I want it. But if you're not sure, depending on you know your skill level or what you're doing, you may want to pin tack or pin staple the back also. But I'm going to go ahead and staple it. And then I'm going to show you previous videos. Uh, you know, folks, if you want, go to my U cover video. It, it shows you really, it gets into the detail of stretching. Um, but you'll, you'll know from that how this is done. What you do is you staple in the middle, come all the way to one end, not all the way to the end, but about an inch away from the end, and staple that. That's tight. And then you just kind of pull it a little bit more. Right. Definitely tell you to go to YouTube, um, on YouTube, on the U cover put in your color and you'll come out with um, the ottoman, how that's done. So I get that all done. Now what I need to do is I have to have my side cutters, or pair of pliers, to take out one side, one half of a side of the front. And then I'm going to stretch to the end. So people say, do you have to be strong to be an upholsterer? I would say, yeah, only stretch leather. <laughs> I am, I am doing a little force on this. It really does have to be stretched. It does take some strength. Fabric, not so much. It's more finesse. This is a little bit more, right? So this is why it's important to know your back and your front on anything you're doing or a top and a bottom, uh, because this is how you start. So the, the theory there is that when you sit on a piece of furniture, um, there's a lot of pressure to the front. So it's always important to start back to front, or turn front to back in this case. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is the sides. Okay. Again, make sure you know where your front is. There's my front. So I wanted to go to the back with the stretch back this way. I'm stretching. I'm leaving my corners, my extreme corners, about an inch or two open. I'm stretching to the back and I'm getting that tight. And then I'm going to come all the way to the front. Again, not all the way, but a couple of inches right there, away from the edge, right? Away from the point. And then this gets stretched. And tack. 
liking the way this is coming out. Okay, I'm going to go to the other side. Again, to the back. And I'm stretching to the back. And I'm going to stretch to the front now. Got to get that tight. Now what I'm going to do is trim it up a little bit for my corner work. So again, if you go onto the Yukawa site um, video, I mean, you'll see how I you get a detail on how I do corners. I will show you. I like to start in the front again. Start in the front. This is the front. And I'm going to show the camera here. So what you need to do is get the get the corner tight, staple it up, and get a staple. I'm trying to do this for the camera, but it's a little awkward. Right near the edge. Like so. Okay. Again, for the camera, I want to then this has to be trimmed. It's especially important on leather because leather is so thick to get your pleat work trimmed really close. Okay, so what I did was I just, I, I cut on that side of the staple and then it flaps out and you can really see what you need to trim. And you, you don't want more than a half of an inch underneath leather as a pleat, I mean. Okay, so what's going to have to happen here, we're going to have to make a small adjustment on this seat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my corner, I'm going to undo a little bit of these staples. It's not uncommon that you have to go back and take some staples out because that's what's required. So I got my pleat done. Now this loosened up a little bit on me, so I need to take a couple of these out and stretch it a little bit more. It should be okay with a couple of staples out. And yeah, I like that. Nice. <clears throat> The other side now. Again, we did. We spent a lot of time on another YouTube video that we did with the U cover, uh, and um, really went into a lot of detail. And that was, I believe, that's a over an hour. I know that maybe an hour and a half. What was it? About an hour and a half? Yeah, an hour. And. Um, Patrick did a lot of subtitles. Subtitles, Pat? Yeah. On that. <laughs> Definitely worth checking out all my YouTube videos. We have nearly 200,000 hits, which we're proud of, and over 100, uh, 1,300 subscribers, so keep subscribing. Yep, and it's growing every day. It really gives me the confidence to, and Patrick the confidence to keep going, you know, with these videos. So, you know, it takes some energy away from, you know, the shop time. Sometimes you really have to get a stretch on this to get it right. So I'm working. Unlike fabric, sometimes fabric just lays down for you. Leather, needs to be worked. Anybody that's had a baseball glove, a new baseball glove, leather baseball glove knows that. It comes all stiff, you know. And you need to work that, you need to work that in. It takes a little while. It's actually, this leather reminds me of a baseball glove. It's the color of a baseball glove. Almost was. Getting happy with that. Very 
we go. Back. I think we're ready to put the final piece on, and that's the cambric. Go over here. I'm just going to trim this leather up a little bit on here. I'm going to look one more time at my where my front is because I want to mark it for the client when they go to put this in. I want to make sure I mark it. I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit more. I think it needs a little bit more tightening. That's good. So for my client. They need to know what the front of that is, so I'm going to mark it somehow on a piece of tape. I'm going to change my staples to a smaller staple. Um, a lot of times on cambric we turn our, our staple down to get a diagonal staple going because a lot of times you're going straight with all the other staples and they, they can go on top of one another and break. So, so when you see a diagonal staple it's not necessarily that it was sloppy, it's more so that it, it avoids a broken staple. That's what I was taught. Makes sense to me. All right. This doesn't take long. You just fold, fold your corners in. where the front is, the staples. <laughs> I'm going to just check it one more time for any staple that might be sticking out. We are done. Oh, that's not bad. So, in 15 minutes, we did what would have taken at least an hour and a half um, in pre-World War II upholstering, which as we all know is uh, horse hair and hand stitching the horse hair to the burlap and the webbing and, and the muslin over the horse hair and then the cotton. And uh, you shoot up to mid-century or modern upholstery and it, it's, uh, it's a fraction of the time. Uh, and, and it saves our clients money. And I really think it would be hard pressed to tell if I had a horse here, slips uh, one next to it, which which was which. So, thanks again. We'll see you next time.